The tensions between China and Taiwan have increased ever since the then US House Speaker Nancy Pelosi visited Taiwan in August 2022. China and Taiwan have had political tensions since 1949 and we are going to talk about those tensions in detail in a bit. But ever since Nancy Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, China has condemned her visit and also soon after they launched a military drill which included ballistic missiles in the area of Taiwan. Not only that, but China has time and again warned the US to not visit and maintain relationships with Taiwan. But why does China not want the US to have any form of relationship with Taiwan? And why does China want to invade Taiwan? You see, China does not consider Taiwan as an independent country. The People's Republic of China that has been ruled by the Chinese Communist Party has always considered Taiwan to be a part of its mainland and has proposed for a peaceful reunification of the island that is Taiwan with the mainland that is the People's Republic of China. On the other hand, Taiwan considers itself as an independent nation. As a matter of fact, it has its own defense, military, army, navy, as well as its own constitution and it follows a democratic ideology. So why does China consider Taiwan as a part of its mainland? To understand that, we have to understand the history of China and Taiwan. During the 17th century, the Dutch invaded Taiwan and Taiwan was a colony of the Dutch up until 1662, after which the Qing dynasty of China claimed Taiwan and then ruled it for the next two centuries up until 1895. In 1895, Japan won the Sino-Japanese War and took control of Taiwan. At this point, Taiwan became a colony of Japan and remained a colony up until 1945. It is important to note that during this period of time when Japan controlled Taiwan, in 1912, the Republic of China was founded and succeeded the Qing Dynasty. Now, coming back to Taiwan being a colony of Japan, in 1945, after losing the Second World War, Japan had to give up control of Taiwan and return it back to China. Now, at this point, Taiwan became a part of the Republic of China. However, in 1948, there emerged a full-scale civil war in China at that point between the Republic of China and the Chinese Communist Party. And in 1949, the Chinese Communist Party won the civil war. And as a result, the Republic of China, which was the ruling government of China at that point of time, had to retreat to Taiwan and establish their government in Taiwan. Not only did ROC move to Taiwan, but about 1.2 million people also moved to Taiwan. And ever since then, Taiwan is also known as the Republic of China. And also, after winning the civil war, mainland China was renamed as People's Republic of China by the Chinese Communist Party or CCP. Now, at that point of time, in 1949, United States had to suspend its ties with the CCP and PRC or People's Republic of China and it maintained its ties with the Republic of China or Taiwan. And since Republic of China had ruled mainland China prior to the civil war, they wanted to reclaim it they wanted to fight back and take control of the People's Republic of China and establish their government back again. So, up until 1970s, everyone around the world, including the UN and its member states, they recognized Republic of China or Taiwan as the actual and true representation of China. However, in 1971, the People's Republic of China, which was led by the Chinese Communist Party, convinced the UN and its member nations that about 98% or roughly 540 million people lived on the mainland in China in 1950 compared to about 8 million people that lived in Taiwan during the same period of time. So the PRC was successful at convincing the UN and its member nations that PRC was the true representation of China and hence PRC or People's Republic of China became a member of the UN and as a consequence Taiwan was removed from the UN and is still to this date not a part of the UN. In 1978 the Chinese government they liberalized their economy and expanded their relationships with other countries and at this point of time the US government thought that communism would eventually be eliminated from China and also it was the Cold War era. Not only that, but the US was forced to choose between the two representations of China to maintain its ties with. And both the Republic of China and PRC, People's Republic of China, they were against the US maintaining its diplomatic ties with both of these countries. So the US at that point of time chose to maintain its ties with the People's Republic of China, at the same time switched its position on recognizing Taiwan as the true representation of China. On one hand, the US started maintaining its relationship with China. On the other hand, it was also maintaining unofficial relations with 
Taiwan, providing the island with military aid and assistance and ever since then has been selling arms on a regular basis to Taiwan. Not only that, but the US has promised to provide assistance, especially military assistance, in case China ever plans to invade Taiwan. In 1979, the US had to abide by the One China principle that the Chinese government has implemented. However, US followed its One China policy, which was slightly different from the One China principle that was imposed by the Chinese government. Not only did the US promise to provide military assistance to Taiwan in case a Chinese invasion took place, but it also has proposed for peaceful negotiations between the two nations. Not only that, but the US has rejected the use of force on the part of China to control and establish their rule in Taiwan. However, China has vowed to reunify Taiwan with the mainland China or the People's Republic of China. They have made it sure that they have not eliminated the use of force if need be. It is also worth noting that as of 2023, only 13 nations recognize Taiwan as a country. So in order to be considered a country, Taiwan has to be recognized a member nation by the 193 members of the UN. However, unlike People's Republic of China, Republic of China or Taiwan, they have a democratically elected government and they follow democracy. And in 2000, Chen Shui-bian became the first non-KMT-led president of the Republic of China or Taiwan. Taiwan has two political parties. One is KMT and the other one is DPP. The tensions between China and Taiwan, they have increased ever since Tsai Ing-wen became the president of Taiwan or Republic of China in 2016. At this point, it is also important to note that KMT does not want Taiwan to be an independent nation and has time and again proposed to be reunified with mainland China. On the other hand, the leader of the Democratic Progressive Party Party, which is DPP, Tsai Ing-wen has rejected this proposal. Also, China has proposed for a one country, two system framework, which has been rejected by Taiwan. Now, what does the one country, two system framework mean? This framework proposes that Taiwan would reunify with China, but would maintain a greater autonomy and also would remain an independent state and follow its constitution. It is the same system that has been implemented in Hong Kong, which has done economically really well for Hong Kong up until 2019 when the Chinese government started taking over Hong Kong and cracked down on its freedom. And this is why even more so Taiwan has rejected the idea of being reunified under the one country two party system that has been proposed by China. Let us take a look at the data to understand how many people in Taiwan actually consider themselves as Taiwanese. According to the recent study, over 60% of the people living in Taiwan, they consider themselves as Taiwanese, whereas about 30% of the people people of the country, they consider themselves as both Chinese and Taiwanese. And only about 2 to 3 percent of the people that live in Taiwan, they consider themselves to be Chinese. So it is very clear that people of Taiwan, they do not want to give up their independence at the hands of China and want Taiwan to remain as an independent nation. Now, let us also look at the democracy and economics of Taiwan. Taiwan has been ranked as the number one democracy in Asia ahead of Japan and South Korea. And overall, it has been ranked 10th globally on the same list. Despite the tensions between China and Taiwan, the people of Taiwan support a democratic independent state of Taiwan instead of it being taken over by China. Now, coming to the GDP of Taiwan, as of 2022, Taiwan's GDP stands at $761 billion with a GDP per capita of about $32,000, which is more than twice of what the GDP per capita of a Chinese citizen is, which is about $12,800. Not only that, but Taiwan has one of the largest tech industries in the world and is also the largest chip manufacturer as well as semiconductor manufacturer in the world with TSMC being the largest chip manufacturer. Taiwan's reunification with China would also mean that China would now have authority over Taiwan's chip manufacturing and not only that but it would have a significant share in the global market in the semiconductor industry. Let us understand as to why Taiwan is important specifically for the US. There are two major reasons as to why Taiwan is of utmost importance for the US. Number one, its geographical location. Taiwan is within the first chain of islands that serves as a host between the network of US allies from Japan to South Korea to Philippines and then into the South China Sea. All these countries that have been mentioned are allies of the US. This region is of utmost importance not only from an economic perspective for the US but also from a defense or a military perspective. Taiwan holds significant importance in this region and as of now it's an independent territory. China is struggling to exercise its power beyond its boundaries. However, if China were to take control of Taiwan, it would then set up its military base in Taiwan and then would monitor and regulate 
and also limit the activity of the US military in that particular region, which would not only indicate a decline in the influence of the US in that particular region, but overall as a superpower. Not only that, but it would also indicate that the US is unable to provide military assistance and security to its allies in that region. And its allies, they would lose the confidence in the US. They would either have to accept the terms and conditions of China or would have to be on their own and increase their own military and defense. The second important reason is from an economic perspective. As I mentioned earlier, Taiwan is the largest chip manufacturer. So if China were to invade Taiwan, it would mean that it would disrupt the production taking place. It would not only halt the production of semiconductors and chip making, but it would also provide losses to all the industries that are attached and would eventually result in trillions of dollars being lost in the global GDP. Hence, for these reasons, Taiwan is important for the United States. And that is why they are committed to providing assistance to Taiwan if China at all invades the country. It is also important to note that at this point, China would learn from the mistakes of Russia's invasion of Ukraine and would plan its course of actions accordingly. But if at all, if an invasion were to take place by China in Taiwan, the Western countries would definitely provide aid and assistance to Taiwan. Whereas Russia, on the other hand, could provide assistance to China, which could eventually lead to a World War III. But this only happens if China decides to invade Taiwan by using force. What do you think? Will Taiwan become an independent nation or will China push for a reunification of Taiwan with China by invading the island? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed watching this video, please share it with your friends and family and also please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you for listening and have a great day.